Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, wrapped up today. Um, feel really good about the guys that we brought in. Uh, we know we took uh, Josh Wiley in the fifth round. Josh is a guy we think can come in and compete for a spot. Um, you know, a versatile guy. You've heard us talk about that a lot uh, lately uh, in terms of guys with versatility. We think he can play wide. We think he can play F. So got him as a contributor. Uh, then Jalen Duncan, uh, tackle. Uh, has played some left tackle, played a little bit of right tackle um, this year. He's a guy that we um, envision having a ton of upside, really, really athletic, um, has some some high-end traits that we love to work with and develop and, um, you know, look forward to working with him. And then to close things out, um, our man CD, uh, UT Martin, a uh, kid that's, that's put it all on tape. You know, we had a chance to visit with him here um, during local day, and he was really impressive. Uh, so I was uh, really glad to get him. think he has a ton of upside uh, as well. Um, you guys have met with me and Vraves uh, these last couple nights. You guys obviously know Vraves very well. Um, this time we have our assistant GM, Chad Brinker, here, uh, who will be in front of you guys for the first time. Uh, so I want to welcome Chad and also just want to say uh, thank you, you know, again to our staff uh, downstairs, you know, uh, Ryan, um, John Salgi, uh, our coaches. Uh, we talked about it this morning. Uh, the way our coaches and our scouts have worked together these last couple weeks is amazing. Uh, I've been a part of some some really good processes, um, and this was a, a really good you know process and one of the best I've been around in terms of those guys working together, creating the list. Um, and the way we had it tiered, and then their ability to actually go out, execute, you know, and get some of these kids. Um, and then, you know, the guy to my right, I was just telling when I came up here, um, had he recruited me, you know, coming out, he might not have wanted to come down to Key West to come get me. Um, <laughs> but I, I definitely would have came and played for him. Um, you know, I've, I've never been around a guy that, that takes so much passion in talking to these kids and getting to know these kids and recruiting these kids in college free agency. So thanks to you too, Coach. Thank you. Guys? Ran all six on the offensive side of the ball. Was that the plan, trying to focus on offense, or did it just play out that way? It honestly uh, just dawned on me about 30 minutes ago that it was all offense. Um, we were just playing the board. And every time you came up at a pick, you know, I guess the way it was stacked and it was ranked, your eyes went to the left, you know, and the way our board is uh, constructed. And uh, healthy conversation on every pick. And we, everyone that we took off the board at wherever we took them, we felt convicted. Uh, it just so happened to be all offense, but it wasn't a design plan or anything. It seemed like every pick that you guys made, like very highly athletic guys, how much did that athleticism play into, you know, your evaluation process? I think you're always looking for guys um, that are athletic and have athletic skills and traits to develop um, that gives you guys that still have growth uh, in their bodies. And as you guys know with this league, I mean, it's, it's growing rapidly. These positions are getting more and more athletic, bigger, stronger, faster, longer. So we want to be able to uh, bring those players in here to, uh, to compete. When you're looking at skill position players from below the Division One level, how much does productivity play into it because Dow certainly seems to have a lot of uh, good numbers that he's put up. Well, I mean, you, when he had to play, you know, power five competition, he played well and proved well. And then when we brought him in for local day and he was amongst the other power five, you know, guys that we brought in here locally, he stood out and looked like a power five guy to us. It just so happened he was at UT Martin. Luke, I mean, how much did that help you with familiarity when it came to Josh, who, who said he met with you, I guess? couple of times over the past year. Yeah, I mean, we've been to Cincinnati. We've been there for pro days in the past. And, you know, he's a local kid and somebody that, um, you know, you just get to know, haven't been there. Um, kind of followed his career, I think, just the last couple of years, uh, being a local local kid growing up in Cincinnati and deciding to stay there. So, um, you know, he's been consistent. Um, and, and the versatility, as Rand mentioned, is something that, you know, I think we're excited to work with. Colton Dow, you said he thought he'd run a 440 and a 44140. Wonder if that's those are times that, that you guys had him at. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I know he did run well, um, and we felt and saw his speed when we saw him live, and his, that same speed showed up on tape. But I, I don't know off the top of my head if it was 441, 440, 443. I don't know that. 
how much, again, I know Jalen came in on a, on a 30 visit. How much did that help kind of getting to know him through the process and how you feel like you have added to the competition? You said Jalen? Uh, yeah, with Jalen. Yeah. yeah. And, how, and, how, how, and him pairing him with uh, Skaronsky coming in, how do you think that helps the competition up front? Uh, yeah, Jalen was a guy that we brought in uh, on a visit. Uh, we've had some productive visits with him throughout the process. You know, met with him uh, at the Senior Bowl. You know, originally, and that was our first exposure to him in person. And then when we brought him in here uh, on the top 30. It was just a truly awesome visit. Really, really got to know him. Um, you know, and it was a, it was a great day. We had a great day with him. And then Coach Raves and I both having a relationship with Coach Loxley uh, down at University of Maryland. We were able to you know get on the phone with him and ask any other further questions that we may have had. Um, so it was it was good getting to know Jalen throughout the process. Chad, I know part of what what you brought here is is an analytical eye. Can can you talk maybe to the role analytics played in, in sorting through the board, as you said it, and, and, and maybe narrowing the focus on some of these guys. Yeah, um, analytics is part of the process. Um, it doesn't drive the decision making; it augments the decision making. Um, so it just helps us, uh, you know, make better decisions. Um, you know, we're we're still building a lot of this stuff out here. Um, there's a whole thing from data management to predictive analytics to the information system and how that gets. Uh, translated to to the staff and, and and to us and helping us in our decision making process. So, um, you know, we we use it. It's part of the process. Is there maybe an example of, of, of an analytics element that that pulled you towards any of these guys? Not an uh, exact example. Like Chad said, it's a part of it, right? So we trust um, our scouts and our coaches' evaluations, and then we use the different, you know, cognitive testing that we talked about. And like Chad said, some of this stuff we're still building out. Um, and we have things to, uh, you know, still work through. Uh, but again, any analytic component that we have that comes from, you know, from Adam or Matt, you know, we consider those things, um, you know, in terms of, you know, researching guys' backgrounds, in terms of uh, injury history and how those predictors set up, um, you know, as well as um, how their, you know, numbers may stack you know, at positions at certain times, you know, just different ways to run the data. Um, so we, we take all that into consideration when we're choosing these guys. On that, Chad, so your model, the injuries is also part of that, is that correct? And can you kind of explain how, how that yeah, works? That, yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, there's there's a couple of things we're going to use it for, um, and we have been. It has to do with the salary cap as well as uh, uh, the injury uh, model that we built. Um, and those things are in, in, in process. Um, so we're a little bit ahead on the salary cap side. Um, we're going to continue to build out the, the, the injury uh, prediction model. Um, so we're, we're in the middle of doing that now. Mike, how much does this class help towards your goal of getting faster as an offense? Right, well, I think there are some guys that really um, that do that. And again, there was some, these were really easy choices uh, as we looked at it and looked at the board. I'm excited to work with this group. I think they all bring a little bit something different, you know, whether it's some versatility or, you know, just looking at Colton at, at the end is big, fast, um, you know, for you volunteer fans, uh, played, played pretty well against them. Um, and and Jalen, uh, just, you know, extremely athletic, as Teron put it. And then we talked about some of the players that, that we drafted um, last night. And then even in this post-draft process, I think there's, you know, a, a large group of players we're excited to work with, whether that's skill players or defensive linemen. And, and, and we do think that there are some, some players that, that can run. And ultimately, you know, is the play speed is what's critical. But it was a great process. How heavily do you feel like you guys will have to be in the undrafted market, especially on the defensive side of the ball, and maybe at receiver where you only drafted one guy with only six picks. Yep, that's uh, that's all happening. It's finishing up you know, right now. We think we're pretty close, but you know we won't probably be at 90 or 91 uh, tomorrow. You don't you don't have to be. I don't think there's any reason to just. We all agree, sign just to sign. But there, a lot of these guys were targeted and, and really feel good about that post draft process that we've done well at. Um, the, the coaches, the scouts, uh, working working together, you know, communicating with players, communicating with us, and communicating with the agent. Mike, you talked about what is first for these guys as far as scheduling goes. When's the rookie camp? And well, I think the first time they can be in here is uh, next Thursday uh, into our building. Um, I, I know the players. You know, we'll, we'll communicate with them and, and, and get them in here and have have some of the post draft guys go through a physical. Um, 
a much greater length than than what we've done. But we've had the ones at a combine and had had the ones on local day. Uh, but they'll go through a, a physical. They'll meet, and then we'll practice here for a couple of days, and then they'll start to, you know, incorporate themselves into uh, what the veterans are doing for that last uh, week of phase uh, two. Started today in terms of the scouts having maybe more say or flexing their their muscle, if you will. But can you tell us a little bit about the role they played in these picks? Yeah. So you know, each one of these uh, these guys, and it's really been like this throughout the whole entire process. Is you know, when we're sitting there and we're looking at the board, and as the board starts to take shape, you know, you tend to you know look at your your scouts and. Hey man, talk to me about this guy. Give me, you know, and you listen to what they say, right? The report is there. You could read the report, but you listen for them to see if they have conviction, you know, on these guys. And uh, we do the same thing with the coaches. You know, um, spent time with the coaches uh, this morning, uh, going through some guys um, that were sitting there in different clumps, and we, you know, watched a couple guys together just to, you know, see how the coaches felt about bringing guys along. And then, like I say, you really get to this, you know, this uh, undrafted process, and that's when it gets really fun. Uh, you know, it's um, sometimes you walk out of that undrafted process, you lose a guy late or you don't get a guy that you're targeting and it almost feels like like the whole day is blown, <laughs> you know, no matter who you drafted because it's so much passion and, you know, you feel the the urgency of guys, you know, and, and the, the collaboration, you know, and you want to bring it home. And if, if a guy slips through, it almost feels you feel defeated. You know, sometimes, but um, like Mike said, all in all, it was a great process. We feel really good about some of the guys we got, uh, some of the guys we targeted. But it's a, um, you know, a huge shout out to you know our coaches and our uh, scouts for that. In regards to the receiver position, like it seemed like you guys were really patient and then able to come away with someone that you were really happy with. Like, what was uh, had to do with that? Like, was it the depth of the the class, or what allowed you to be so patient at that position? I think always you have to be patient, right? Um, you know, we talked about it, not just, um, you know, taking a guy to fill a need. You know, uh, we want to get the right people and the right players uh, in here uh, that'll help this program. Uh, but also, you know, understanding the board and value. And if there's a valuable player that can help us and contribute and we have a clear vision for it um, and it's standing out, then we're going to take that guy as well. Um, and again, like Coach said, we don't have to be at 90 uh, tomorrow. Um, there's still a million more ways we can go about acquiring guys to help us. Uh, so we just got to let this full process, you know, take shape. We don't have to have the roster um, at 53 until September. So we got to continue to let this process go. We have free agency first. We started there. Now it's draft season, and still there are still players that are going to come available to us, and it's just all a part of the process. You guys, can you tell you guys about, have acquired uh, skills a little bit, and and maybe how it differs from from Chig. Are they different enough that they could both be? Used to get yeah, I mean, we think that that Josh, you know, has the ability to to maybe put on some weight. Uh, he's done that, uh, played at the line of scrimmage, um, and I think going through some of the training has probably gone down a little bit. But I know that he feels comfortable in his frame to to add and and to lose um, to to figure out what the best play playing weight is for him. And uh, I, I think he's shown to be physical. I think he's shown to. Um, you know, be able to, to, to make plays in the intermediate part of the field. And so I think that there is a level of versatility, and we talked about that. And so we'll kind of see where he best fits. But absolutely, um, you know, him and Chig could, could play on the field at the same time together. Yeah, Mike, I understand not rushing to get the very last player on the, on the 91. <clears throat> but the last couple of years, you guys have been filling out the roster, you know, all the way through September and, and into the season. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we'll do that. Yeah. Injuries and, and, and stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, and we're going to get to 91. I mean, it's just we're talking about a couple spots here that instead of just grab. I mean, you get to a point down there that's like the Wild West down there after the draft ends. And so when you have – when you look up and you're like, okay, we need 20 spots, you know, you're not going to take the 97th corner just to get to 91 or whatever it may be. I mean, we've targeted guys. Our coaches and scouts have watched a lot of film had communications and so you miss out on some of those you know what I mean you think you're going to get some of the players and you and you don't and it's competitive and it's unfortunate but you can't just go down to the bottom of the list and take somebody that you've never heard of and you know bring in here but we've you know we've got extensive lists and so maybe we're going to be a few short of 91 it was just saying that 
you don't have to fill up every spot. We feel good about these these players that we were able to sign in the post draft process, same way as we felt good about the ones that that we drafted. Mike, you and Rand have both referred to picks in the moment as like easy, like easy choice mm -hmm. for you guys. Is that typical of like drafts you've been a part of in the I, past? And I, what made it that way for you? There were there were some players that kind of stood out on on lines that that separated themselves. Um, you know, could have come off that and, and probably dropped down a rung uh, and, and got into that other pond. But, you know, the, the players that we've took at certain levels were kind of sticking out by themselves. And like Rand mentioned, you kind of looked to the left and, you know, there was a player that was still there, um, felt, felt really good about him and uh, spent time with him and, and were able to make the pick. In terms of analytics again, uh, how much? How has analytics changed the way you evaluate a quarterback, and what part of analytics stood out with the, the pick of Will? Yeah, uh, I guess I'll say this. Um, you know, Rand brought me in here because of my background of having the, the, the college experience, the pro experience, and salary cap experience, and analytics experience, um, and also playing the game. Now, I, I think that there's uh, when, when you look at this this decision making tree, like I think of the experiential uh, intuition. That's traditional scouting. You can't take the collective wisdom of the scouts and the coaches in the room and just throw it out. That's a major, major pro part of a, um, the decision making, the process. But I do think you look at the exploratory analytics or descriptive analytics, um, and then there's a predictive component of it as well. So, I mean, all those things, if that's getting to your, the question you're asking, yeah, all that's being brought into the decision making as we look at these, these players. And, and we have this communication, we talk about it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about that tape. You know, okay. can the guy play? Sorry. Under, understand why you like Colton and, and know you brought in uh, you know, one, one free agent. But for the things you've, you've talked about, uh, about the wide receiving core, is, is that enough turnover to get out of that group, what you've talked about? Uh, going into Monday, it will be. Yeah. And we're going to continue to explore and find ways to – to improve our roster and make it as competitive as possible. So uh, on Monday it will be. Uh, we, we felt good if, you know, for, for us to add a receiver, we would have come far off our, our board at those certain levels. And, and that's what I'm happy about. You, you, you guys um, are going to trust us. You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put players in here that are going to help us win. That, that, that last part kind of goes back to the, to the previous question. You can find ways to improve your roster. Free agency's over and the draft's over. Aren't those the places no, to free, improve your free roster? No, free agency's not. They're going to let us sign free agents um, Monday. They, they will. Chad will. Rand will. They'll, they'll let us sign free agents on Monday. Uh, free agency is going to go all the way up until the season starts. Uh, there'll be players that uh, are on other teams that will become available Monday. Take a look. It'll be Real large waiver wire. We'll scour that. We'll continue to look for for trade possibilities and opportunities. Uh, Chad and Vin will will help us with the salary cap, find ways to to open up uh, salaries so that we can potentially sign other players. You know, there's been a pretty good process here, and I, I'm excited about it. In the current receiver room, Mike, a couple guys coming back, Kyle Phillips, Mason McMath. What what do you what do you think you can get from them this coming season? Oh, well, I mean, I think that that'll be determined by their, you know, the efforts they put in and Kyle's ability uh, to, to come back and, and maintain some consistency that he had early on and through training camp. Uh, Ray, Racy knows that this is a critical uh, point in his career, and he's got to, you know, continue to, to play and improve and be big and fast and, and help us and adjust to the football down the field and do some of the things that he did uh, in training camp last year before or unfortunately got hurt. So uh, though those are two guys that we're excited to work with. One one is really quick in the slot, and uh, the other one is, is a big outside receiver that um, starting to improve and, and knows that he needs to continue to take steps. Yeah, you mentioned the analytical model and, and how that regarding injuries. How does that impact like the way you look at a guy like Tajay Spears or you know with the history of injuries? How does that impact you guys all being comfortable making a selection like that? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, you know, you, you you go to your medical team. I mean, that's 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 where it starts, and you got to trust uh, your medical team and their evaluation. 
And, and obviously we selected that guy because um, he's a great player and we felt really comfortable about where he was medically. Um, and then, of course, yeah, you look at all the other factors, you know, how many games did they miss, you know, how often were they injured. Um, just the, there's a, a varied a variance of things that we, that we look at throughout the process. Um, we felt really good about, about that running back. Scott here, you kind of told us about the Eureka moment with Elijah Mitchell and his tape. Did you have anything similar in this pre-draft process with any of the guys you guys picked of just kind of falling in love with them? Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know if it was um, – and, I, I, you know, again, for me, I can't take credit for, you know, the Elijah Mitchell thing. Um, you know, it was Again, it was the work of our coach and, you know, coach on the defensive side and our analytics guy. Um but coming in and, you know, looking at all these guys, man, it's something to love about each and every one of them. Um, and, again, you know, we, we talked about getting the right people in here. But I think if you go through this list, you know, all six guys, like there are traits in each one of these guys that they can contribute uh, to our team. You know, like Mike tells everybody, it doesn't matter how you got here. You know, it's what you do out here on the grass. So we see these traits, and hopefully these guys, you know, continue to grow and develop out here on the grass is when they get here, and they'll create their own way. Mike, you uh, talked a little bit about Duncan, but get the sense there's a lot of upside there. What, what's he kind of got to do to – to reach that level, he kind of got to refine. He has to show up and be the person that that we saw and everybody in this building saw on that 30 visit, and uh, that that was a, that it was a special player that showed up there that day. That was one that was engaged, that had gained uh, significant weight and and looked really good. Uh, had put weight on and put strength on. Um, that that's what he has to do, and and everything else uh, will take care of everything else. Uh, we'll, we'll push him, we'll teach him, we'll coach him. But if he shows up, if that person shows up every day, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be excited to work with him. Brandon, obviously this year wasn't the way it will be in future years for you, given that you, you came in kind of late, I guess, in the process. And how much different do you think it's going to be for you moving forward, having gone through this now, and now you'll have a full year before the next one of these? Um, you know, uh J. Rob and I, as our backgrounds are similar in terms of the systems that we were, you know, taught under. So, you know, some of the things conceptually um, are kind of similar. Uh, but more than anything, you know, the process here is, is really good, you know, and it's not about me and the process and systems that I think work because it's our scouts that do a lot of the work and a lot of the, um, you know, the, the core things that we want to do. So it's about uh, Chad and I collaborating, you know, with our current scouts uh, about what works for them, you know, what makes for the best and uh, most efficient process for them to continue to getting us the best information to make, uh, help us make the most informed decisions. So, um, you know, once we get through, uh, these this next week or so, um, we'll can, we'll sit down, you know, as a group, and we'll kind of start ironing out how we're going to do things moving forward. But again, it's about creating the best environment for those guys, you know, downstairs right now, uh, to make us better. How would you describe maybe what the activity is like as far as trades, teams trying to engage with you, you trying to make moves, and how you think all that you handed all was the first time GM? Um, I told you guys last night I'm lucky, you know, to have an experienced guy like Mike. Um, there were several moments, you know, where I, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking something, you know, I look at Mike, I look at Chad and it's, you know, we're like, hey, like, what do you think? You know, asking them for their, you know, genuine advice and their thoughts. Um, and both guys were, you know, very, very helpful. Uh, there was no decision um, that was made, you know, throughout this whole weekend that was singular. It was just us working together. You know, some of these picks, we had people on the phone wanting to come to our spot. You know, there were thoughts of maybe us going back, trying to play the board and see if guys would be there. But at each turn that we had to pick, we were convicted about someone. You know, uh, it was uh, – I won't get too, you know, particular or specific, but uh, there were at least two picks um, that we made this weekend where um, we had a team on the phone waiting on us to say yay or nay but we look up there on the board and we felt convicted about a guy. So it was one guy telling, you know, said team no, while the other guy was calling the player. Going back to when you were younger, you know, the TV on, on the dresser, you always wanted to do <laughs> something like this. Having gone through it, is there anything that, you know, kind of surprised you or what do you think of the overall experience? Uh, definitely a cool experience. Uh, I won't say anything surprised me. Uh, I've been fortunate to be, um, 
you know, under some some really good GMs that, that all did it different ways and always watched and paid attention uh, in those moments. Um, you know, the um, I, th- I said it last night. I just I just wanted to act like I've been here before, you know, and not try to get too high, not try to get too low, but just stay in the middle. Um, and, you know, try to be consistent, you know, throughout it all. Um, there are a couple spots where, you know, in my mind there's a player there that you'd love to get, you know, and that player comes off the board and it's, you know, you hit that dam and it hits you in your chest, you know, a little bit. But, you know, you got to keep rocking, uh, got to keep pushing forward, and, and we did that. And at each turn, you know, there may be a player there that you like, um, or that you were hoping are going to be there, but there's also a player there that you're like, hey, I like this guy just as much, and it just everything just fell, you know, accordingly. Maybe a one-off this year, you know, next year, future years could be crazy. Um, but again, I'm thankful and uh, grateful to have the experience, you know, and these two guys that are flanking me uh, to lean on. Man, you, you enjoy the kind of storyline. I know you picked him for a, he's a football player, but the storyline of a guy like Dowell. Small school like that managed to work out, make an impression for you guys. You'd like to see that that kind of thing happen uh, for for guys from smaller schools. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, our we're in the player acquisition business. You know, however that comes. You know, um, there you know there was that term back in the day, a diamond in the rough. You know, that doesn't exist anymore. You know, the way these scouts work, um, if there's a good player out there, we're gonna find them, and. Um, you know, with with a guy like him, it was a cool phone call. You know, he's right here locally, you know, right down the road. And, you know, to hear a player say, I, this was the phone call I was hoping I was going to get, not just the phone call of being drafted, but wanting to play for your team and feeling good about his one visit here, coming away from here, really wanting to be here, uh, says a lot about, you know, what Coach has built in terms of the culture, and it says a lot about the people we have here. Brandon, what would you say to your new fan base about the collective guys that you've got in this class? I think we have great people, uh, first and foremost. I think we have really good football players um, that will all work. They're all going to put in the work. They're all going to, you know, come here and uh, hope to live out their dreams of playing, you know, um, in Nissan Stadium on Sundays. Um, and we're, we're excited to have them. Thank you, guys. Thank you.